Can a comedian write a funny joke in five minutes? Do you think it can be done? Probably not. Better question, is comedy still funny today? <laughs> and online comedy and all that, virtual comedy, is that funny? It wasn't funny being stood up. You are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Keith. Judith Scheindlin. This is Judge Keith. Judy. Uh, what kind of mood are you in? Pretty happy. Okay, but you don't seem happy. Oh, that's just how I am. What should viewers know about you? I really don't want them to know anything about me. What do you do for fun? Why do you want to know these things? Have you ever been to a local stand-up open mic? But yeah, you dragged me along. I think they could use a lot of work. Eh. The comedians had five minutes to write a joke, and we'll see if this asshole thinks that joke is funny, because one person will win, and they'll become our champion for this episode. What if I hate them all equally? Nice uh, quarantine haircut you got going there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just gonna give you a prompt, and then five minutes, and when okay. time's up, when the time's up, you can just say a joke, guys. Uh, better have not like a face mask all the time I do it. Nah, nah, it doesn't really matter. I like it more uh, just saying the joke, or am I like pitching it to you, giving you? Um, I guess like saying it like it's a show. And I'll take your joke, show it to a judge, and that judge will uh, judge it. Probably harshly, he's kind of a dick. Okay. Um, okay, so are you ready for your prompt? Yes, I am. Okay, the prompt is monsters. Do whatever you want with that. And All right, the first video here. Jackson. You know, back in the day, you were afraid of monsters under your bed, coming out, grabbing you and doing stuff to you. But now there's like a total group of people that are really into people doing mean shit to them while they're in bed. Like, I wonder, I wonder if that gives monsters self-esteem issues. Like, oh, you didn't like it when I did it, but now that Jim is doing it, <laughs> you're totally into it. It's because I'm ugly, isn't it? That's got, it's got to be what it is. That, that ain't right. I was, I was there for years for you and nothing. You let this guy in, you met at a bar, puts his hands around your throat and you're totally gonna call him the next day. I mean, that's like what, you know, and then what else can a monster do after that? Like work the midnight shift at a Waffle House? And this is, there's a, there's a we're, we're, what we're doing is we're causing issues with monsters that we don't even realize. Like is dressing up as a monster, is that monster appropriation? Like, is there an ACLU for monsters? If not, there should be. All right, Jackson. I'm gathering my thoughts. All right, Jackson. I like the living in a shed vibe you got going. I'm always down for little kink fetish monster jokes. That part really had me going with a, a light, light chuckle. I'm not gonna have great reactions for these things, but overall on a scale of zero through 10, I'd give it about a 0.8. Room for improvement, but there was a little something, a little oomph there. A little oomph there, Jackson. Will Eisenberg. It, when you have monsters as a little kid, everyone's afraid of monsters. But you ever notice how the monsters always choose really specific locations to haunt you? Right? They're like, they're under the bed, they're in your fancy walk-on closet. Like, not all kids can afford bed frames and walk-in closets. I'm pretty sure that childhood monsters are just classist. They're targeting the 1% with their memory foam mattresses and tempur -Pedic pillows. Um, <laughs> and meanwhile, poor kids just sleep on the floor and they don't get any good childhood monsters. Because guess what? Poverty is the real monster, right? You don't have time to be listening to monsters growling when the growling is coming from within, from your stomach, because you don't have money because the economy and classism. Um, and then you grow up and then monsters kind of take on a whole different meaning. Like instead of a monster in the closet, they use a closet to talk about like secrets, like closeted this or closeted that. Or if you have family shameful secrets, you have skeletons in the closet. 
because our monsters as we grow up are just more things that we hate about ourselves and our families. Um. <laughs> No, oh, well, you had some good points. Yeah, overall, I like, I kind of liked it. Well, we'll go pros, con list. <laughs> Steve's over here laughing like an idiot. Y'all know. <laughs> You're another one who went with the monsters that haunt us, haunt us as children, and then you pivot to the monsters of today. You had a lot of good points about the closet, the closet space, how some people have better closets than others. Overall. It, w it was a bit of a, a ramble. It's like a podcast five minute segment more than I'm being very harsh. Fuck you, Will. Yeah. 0.65. Zero is the leading digit. 0 0.65 for Will. It's terrible, Will. Terrible. Monsters are a status symbol for the one. Oh, there's a little more of Will. Oh, okay. <laughs> he, he tagged it with a thesis. Oh, yeah. He gave his joke a thesis. Ryan Locke. I, um, so as a kid, like most kids, I was afraid of monsters under monsters my bed. Under the bed. Um, but I was a pretty realistic child, so animal? my monster was something real that could actually, so like, animal. maybe be under there. And my monster was a frog. Um, you know, when I was little, and like my mom being practical as well, she like helped me go under the bed with a fishing net to catch my frog monster and like gently put it outside. And you know, what a shitty imagination like <laughs> for a little kid to have. Like I sound like, I sound like the kid who like might audit their parents. Like Aaron, you know, what's your dream guy? Like anything you can really think of. And I'll just be like, I don't know, like two arms, two legs, a head, like maybe a dick. Are there other options? <laughs> and that's all I want. <laughs> Does his name Ryan? Is her name? Ryan Mock? Aaron. Aaron? Her, Ryan is her husband. Aaron? <laughs> it's a little weird that a frog was your monster, it seems like you didn't have enough Muppets in your childhood to be scared of a frog. There's just not much to go off of. Um, I did think about that human you created. One more thing you could add in besides the arms, legs, penis is a, a joke. That would be helpful. I think we know the first digit, a zero. But as for the second digit, uh, because of the frog shaming, I'm gonna knock it down a little and give you a 0 0.5. Talk to the hand, 0.5, 0 0.5. Two more. What? Two more. All right, so every kid, myself included, when they're growing up, they just took it for a fact that there were monsters That's under so the bed. Funny you know, there. they're just work. You know, I knew it. I saw it. I looked under there. Okay, it was lint, but it smiled at me. I swear to God, it smiled at me. It looked me in the eye. But you know, then I grew up and I realized, okay, okay, I'm safe right now. Huh. You know, monsters. I mean, the the tears of adults—they're just not nourishing. There's no vitamin A in it. Everyone knows that. And so. But then I was talking to my friends and I realized that, no, when I'm asleep now, spiders are gonna crawl into my mouth. As an adult, I have to worry about spiders crawling into my mouth. I know this, all the smart people I know said that spiders like warm, moist places, dark, moist places. So apparently that's what my mouth is and it's just party central for spiders. Even though I must be a monster to them. I mean, they have eight eyes, seeing me is clearly not a problem. But, you know, so I guess we just have to resign to the fact that, you know, there may not be monsters, but we're all getting a healthy diet of spiders as we sleep. And, but you know what? We'll be well nerfed with protein during this quarantine. His name is Nicholas? Yeah. <laughs> it's the best medicine has. 
just thinking of my insults. Nicholas, thanks for coming. Thanks for recording that from the sun. Overall, I would say if you gathered a bunch of chimps together, all the time, all the typewriters, they still wouldn't have written something that hideous, that baffling. I mean, five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, still gonna have the same score, I feel. The monsters, everybody's loving to start with the monsters under the bed. Monsters under the bed. First stop, monsters under the bed. There's other monsters. Didn't anyone see the R. Kelly documentary? Whew. What was his actual jokes? He talked about monsters under the bed. Was he the vitamin child tears guy? That's how bad it, like I can't even remember if you're the child tears guy. I just don't care about any of these videos. If I'm honest. Yeah, you had the spiders in the mouth. That's not how it's true. But I'm not gonna be like one of those guys. Even though this is the point of the video. Overall, I forgot your name, but I'm gonna give you a 0 0.49. It would have been a five, but I just have to put you a little below Aaron, I think. For the frogs. Sucks to be you, guy, I don't know. All right. Frankenstein is like our most iconic monster. I think of him as like one of the scariest guys. But this, he's not even a monster. Frankenstein is just a tall man who was made of several other men and who one guy just put together. It, the scary thing about Frankenstein is he has no purpose. There's no motivation for the monster of Frankenstein. He spends the entire time literally just <laughs> trying to find the guy who created him and be like, hey man, you left me with no faculties. I have no name. I have no emergency content. You just named me after you. And then everyone sees him and is like, oh my God, this Frankenstein guy is. This guy is so scared. We should be scared of the scientist. That's who we should be worried about. The guy who has no accountability made this guy and he's like, well, he's just not exactly what I envisioned and then just abandon him. <laughs> this Frank Frankenstein's monster is the most relatable character. He's just trying to, he's like, give me some sort of purpose. And... And he's the monster in this? No, it's, it's the fucking scientist. What was his name? Charlie. Charlie. That was funny. Charlie, I appreciate you not rambling about monsters under your bed to start this off. You had a fresh Frankenstein take. I mean, it wasn't like fresh if you've ever been in an English class and discussed the book, but it was fresh relative to all this junk Steve is making me watch. But I agree, the, the real monsters are the scientists with their vaccines. Just kidding. It did look like you recorded from like Russia or something like that. Really. Yeah, Frank. That, no, was Charlie is his name? Charlie. Was there a Frank? All right, Frank. Charlie, overall. I mean, not bad. I would say, Good, but it has an asterisk relative to everybody else. Oh, I'm such a jerk. Charlie, for your score, it has a nine in it. Leading digit zero, punctuation, point, 0 0.9. I love you as people. I hate you as comedians. Keep up the work. All right, Keith, how was the judging? I think I was judgmental. You sure were. And who I... I sure were. <laughs> Corny game show host, fucking Richard Dawson over here. Don't judge me. The winner uh, that you decided was Charlie Coges with a score of 0 0.9. Um, so I'll let him know. What, 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 do you, what would you say if someone watched... Uh, 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 Why? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show all of the comedians your reaction to their jokes. What? Yeah, what do you think they're going to say? <laughs> they're probably going to cuss me out. 0 0.8 out of 10, which I, I, I got to say that's not too bad, especially coming from a guy who looks like a bald-headed version of a taxi driver fetish. Oh! One minute! Uh, starring Robert De Niro. Uh, it's pretty clear that he got that shirt from when you could wear military surplus. Wow. Uh, 
Um, and, and what I do think it is, I think he's mad that I have a, this much hair down here, and uh, and, and I, I, I have, I know I was wearing a hat, but he can tell that I have hair. And just so he knows, I don't shave my head because God hates me. Like, clearly, God hates him. Oh my goodness. That's why he's bald. Um, but I shave my head just to let people like him know I can do this and grow it back. So, and that's, that's totally fine. I would expect that from someone who clearly wakes up that angry every day about that. That's it. Oh my goodness. Wow. 0.65. Uh, th does the zero represent uh, your shiny bald head? Uh, you said that I had a lot of good points at first, but you know who didn't have any good points? You. Neither your commentary nor your head had points. It's just a smooth, pointless head, smooth, pointless commentary. Who's this guy's name? Eric? Guy? Keith. 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 His name is Keith. Keith. Okay, well, Keith, if, if you were still alive today, what I would tell you is that you have no sense of proportion or comedy. Wait, are you saying that he's dead? Is he? He looked dead from the video. I don't know. Yeah, I don't blame him at all for that story. Um... <laughs> Not much for me to say. They're really good about it. Like, I wanted to just, like, you know, I'll speak it and it uh, to the arms of the penis. Did he say a joke? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I thought I heard that right. Like, I love it. <laughs> okay, well, I guess I'd say, first of all, what do you have against chips? I mean, you know, they're pretty smart, and, uh, I didn't have, uh, a thousand chips and a thousand typewriters for a thousand years. I had one chip, me, for, uh, you know, five minutes and uh, one typewriter. And, you know, that's what you get. But, you know what? Um, you just gotta be smarter than the chip to get my humor. I guess that's what it comes down to. That's the best possible representation of my comedy. I had no issues with uh, his critique up until the number part, which just seems his fault for using a bad scale Gosh. but it wasn't uh it wasn't much of a joke as much of it was just uh you know some some thoughts and it was interesting he said it was fairly rudimentary if you take it in english class because that is sometimes you're like oh i got an interesting opinion on this thing and then people yeah. are like yeah that's just like if you've spent any time thinking about this that's what it is so i think that probably what i did with frankenstein is i just was like here's a crazy take on the novel and then it's like well that's actually the point of the novel so, uh, you know, mostly fair what he did, except he seemed, seemed mean with the number. Sorry, we don't all cool jackets like that guy. <laughs> well, you did win. Um, it's exciting. It's exciting. It's exciting. <laughs>